All right, Jem, we have oodles of gaming questions, so we better get started. Yeah, we sure do, but hang on, how many gaming questions make up an oodle? Oh, um, I, I don't know, Jem, but what really are numbers anyway? What is a measurement? But these are not the questions we're here to answer. We're here to answer questions like this one from Zeb, sent to us in video form. Hello, GGSB. Zeb here. I have two questions for you. One, how do you defeat the Reaper Leviathan in Subnautica? And two, is Subnautica Below Zero a DLC or a new game? P.S. Darren, do these. Oh, some things for Darren. Hello, hello. Hi, Darren. We have some emoticons for you. Oh. Aha! Wink! Electric dreams! Hey, thanks, Darren. Oh, you may as well stick around to help us with some of these Subnautica questions. Oh, goody! Right, well, thanks for your great question, Zeb. First, to the question of how to defeat a Reaper Leviathan. Now, typically, if I ever come across a Reaper Leviathan in Subnautica, I simply get out of there as quickly as possible while screaming and panicking. And you know, that's worked just fine for me so far. Don't fear the Reaper, man. No, no, I, I do fear the Reaper, Darren. Absolutely do. They are very scary and very deadly. But in order to answer Ask SP questions, must we not be bold? Must we not be brave? Must we not face both the real and metaphorical Reaper Leviathan within us all? Ah, you make a good point, Darren. But that is easier said than done. Facing the Reaper Leviathan in creative mode is one thing, but in survival mode, it's a whole nother kettle of bladderfish, as we discovered. We sure did. Now, before trying to tackle this task, you'll want to make sure you have a stasis rifle and a thermoblade at the very least, and high oxygen capacity. Once you have these things and you've located a Reaper, or it's located you, the method that worked for us was to charge up the stasis rifle as much as possible and let loose at the right time to freeze the Reaper's head. Then quickly swim to its underside, charge another stasis shot and use a thermoblade to deal some damage. Make sure you're charging that stasis rifle all the way up before using it. It's so much more effective that way. Totally. And keep refreshing the stasis when you can so the Leviathan doesn't get away. Then just rinse and repeat this process for a few minutes and eventually the Leviathan seems to fall. Any other tips, Darren? Well, aside from always keeping an eye on your oxygen, I'd recommend having reasonable full health, food and water meters too. You want to be as prepared as possible before attempting the deadly dance with this demon of the deep. <laughs> and it's worth noting that while the stasis rifle does freeze the reaper temporarily, it can still get you while in stasis if you're too close to its head. I learned that the hard way. Oh, yikes. Good tips there, Darren. Thanks for your input. Bye. You're most welcome. So long. <laughs> And don't forget, Reapers can do lots of damage not only to you, but to your vehicles, like the Seamoth, Prawn Suit or Cyclops. Always keep your vehicle somewhere safe before getting too close to a Leviathan, and create a reliable save point beforehand if you insist on taking one on. Or, you know, you could just adopt my motto, leave that Leviathan be. Put the leave in. Leviathan. Also a valid option, no shame in being a coward. Now on to the question of whether Below Zero is a DLC or a whole new game. Well, it's being called a standalone expansion. So you don't need to have the original Subnautica to play it. It's basically a new chapter in the Subnautica universe, which takes place after the events of the first game. Yeah, much of the gameplay is similar, but there are new creatures, features, items, and things like that. But I'd still recommend playing the original Subnautica before you play Below Zero, especially because Below Zero is still in early access. Yeah, me too. Moving along now to another question from Rockin' Lachlan, who's inside all computers in South Australia. Lachlan! No, no, South Australia. Oh, we're in New South Wales. Okay. How much CPU power would you recommend for a gaming computer that can handle a variety of games? P.S. Love the show, hope it goes on as long as games do. P.P.S. Gem, do these. Thanks, Rockin' Lachlan. <laughs> if you're wondering how much CPU power is recommended for a gaming computer, well, there are a lot of variables to consider here and things to weigh up. Yeah, we'd probably be here for ages if we really got into the nitty gritty of CPU specs. I know Darren could go on about this stuff for eons. He even made a whole series explaining stuff about computers, which you can check out online. 
Oh, let's not get him started again. My suggestion, if you want to find out what kind of CPU power would suit you personally, is to choose a few of the games you're hoping to play and then check out the minimum and all required system specifications for those games. These are usually available to view on the digital stores or the backs of game boxes. Yeah, hopefully this will give you a bit of a ballpark of what might work for you. What might work for CPU? Ah, uh, yes, very good, very good. Uh, yeah. Now to another quick question, and this one is from Natasha in Hobart. I had lots of fun trying out the new game Cooking Simulator. Do you think there will be updates on this game soon to stop me from being less clumsy in the kitchen? Thanks, Natasha. If you're wondering whether there will be updates for Cooking Simulator, I'd say this is definitely a possibility. At the very least, the developers seem to be patching the game and making small tweaks and improvements. So future updates may fix bugs and improve some controls to help with the feeling of clumsiness you're referring to. Although managing the silly physics does seem to be part of the fun and whole experience of the game. Yeah, very much so. Aside from this, I think it would be great to see some kind of co-op element, oh, or maybe even a VR mode. Just my Suggestions? I mean, that would be so cool in VR. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Well, I think we may have run out of time for today, but if you have a question for Ask SP, go here and send it in. And make it a video for your chance of scoring some special GGSP goodies. Oh, did you know, Gem, that an oodle is the collective noun for a group of poodles? Is that true? Yes. And did you know the collective noun for a group of rads? Raddles? A very good.